Sizzle was founded in 2006 by Tom Maurer Sr. and his son Tom Jr. with the mission to create the most powerful personal care products and dietary supplements in the world. In short, Sizzle wants to help people around the world to take back their health. There are many things uh, we carry within Sizzle, but tonight we're going to specialize in our Fit and Fabulous uh, weight loss system, which is really unique and revolutionary in the world. Uh, weight loss is the biggest uh, market in all of network marketing uh, of any category that there is. And because of that, uh, we have looked at it uh, in a real serious manner and not moved on making a product until just recently. And as we did, we put together some really powerful chemistries that are unrivaled anywhere within the industry, and they will do what no other products will do. We're going to show you how to lose weight fast and how to keep it off and how to improve your health and your biology as you dramatically lose weight. So let's talk about the Fit and Fabulous weight loss system, and we're going to talk about essentially uh, four different products. But now in North America, as an example, and it's going around the world, about 60% of the people are overweight, and about 30% of them are obese. Well, those are issues that uh, we need to address, and so there are ways of doing it. And we have uh, a very powerful weight loss program, but let's look at how the other programs are that are in the marketplace, and really they don't work. Uh, the, the Food and Drug Administration says that if you're going to make a weight loss claim, you have to decrease calories and or increase exercise. If you do that, you can make a weight loss claim. And then you have to say it supports weight loss. Okay, so we're going to ask you to cut back on calories, and we're going to recommend that you increase exercise. But we're going to give you massive support that is unparalleled ever before in the industry to help you to get rid of fat, uh, to burn fat, and to do it in a healthy way. And in the industry, it says about two pounds a week is pretty good weight loss. In fact, is pound and a half to two pounds. We think that's all right, but we believe you can do two to five uh, quite easily, especially at first, and then uh, you can keep that weight off because you're not going to be damaging your biology as with other products. Now, there's a lot of products out there, but normally they lower your BMR. That's your basic metabolic rate, and they also damage your BMI. That's your body mass index. In other words, the major ingredient they have in meal replacement is based on soy. And soy can really do some damage. Um, they can create metabolic syndrome. They can certainly damage your health. Uh, there's a lot of effects with the soy because it uh, can really uh, create a lot of health hazards in your body. I'll tell you, so there's a dark side of soy, and we're going to actually publish a, a piece of literature so you can see it. Yeah, if you consume, consume soy, you create a product within your body called phytic acid. And phytic acid is really uh, hard on the body because it makes it so difficult to absorb nutrients, particularly minerals and vitamins and things like that. And so you can have quite a bit of health damage from doing it. Also in soy, there are estrogen mimics. In other words, they're phytoestrogens, plant-based estrogens, and they act like estrogen. Well, estrogen is what is it designed for? One of the things is to, for reproduction, to build a baby, to store fat, to uh, make it so that you have a reserve so that when you uh, bear a child that you'll have all these fat reserves to fuel the growth of that child. But if you're, uh, of course, if you're not, then what's going to happen? You're just going to store that fat. So phytoestrogens uh, help to encourage the body to want to store fat. And as you look at many of these meal replacement weight loss products that are on the marketplace, they're soy-based. You can look at the ingredients, and if soy is in the first uh, three or four that are listed, you have to list them in order of concentration. It means it's got a high level of soy in it. So uh, soy also has a, a lot of contaminants in it. It's one of the most heavily uh, contaminated products that's uh, in the a world today. Uh, the crops are so attacked by weeds and parasites and, and insects and all of those things that they put tremendous amounts of chemicals uh, on the soy crop so that they can maximize the output from it. Soy in itself is not really good protein. It's only been really eaten in the last uh, 
I don't know, century or so, the Chinese who developed uh, soy, but they didn't use it for human consumption, and with good reason, because there are so many negative aspects with it, which the Chinese, with their knowledge of natural medicines, of course, would know that. One of it is they have iso, uh, isoflavones. Now, you don't hear about these terms, so this is why I'm trying to give you a, uh, an update so you can understand it. Isoflavones are, are significantly linked to some of the serious issues that women have with uh, thought to be like leukemia, uh, breast cancer, endometrial cancer, and those types of things. So uh, companies try to say, well, these are isoflavones. Well, so what? Look what the studies show that isoflavones do. They're a very negative effect. The other problem with, uh, with them and with uh, the phyto, the plant-based estrogens are there, is they act like estrogen. So if you have children that are overweight, uh, it can, it's thought to be, and this is scientific opinions, of course, and, and my personal opinion through this, uh, this whole presentation based upon what I believe to be true, which is based upon what research I've seen and developed and have examined, but uh, estrogens act like estrogen. Plant-based estrogens act like that. And as a consequence, uh, it's thought that they can overdevelop girls and create a lot of problems down the road, even things like heart attack. But certainly they can be overdeveloped. They go through puberty earlier. And, uh, and down the road they can have some serious health hazards that come because of that. It does the same thing on boys. Boys, uh, phytoestrogens suppress the male, the masculine, or the andro androgenic processes. So it's thought it can underdevelop boys. In fact, is in, in men, uh, because of all the estrogen mimics that are in our environment, uh, personal care products are probably the worst of them all. Uh, plastic and bottles contain a lot of it. and But so does uh, the ingredients that are in hair shampoo and bath and shower gel and shave gel and skin lotions and, and the bottles themselves, as I, as I said, and they'll leach right out into the product. So as a consequence with... Uh, this, they will uh, suppress the male development. And am I saying that men are not the men that they used to be? That's really true. Sperm count, which used to be somewhere up around 100,000 units or more in a milliliter of fluid, is now down to about 5,000. That's a, a 90, over 95% decline, and that's happened in the last 50 or 60 years. Uh, and it's thought to be because of these phytoestrogens are in it. So what we've done is we have said, well, number one, we're not going to use soy. We don't want all of those negative aspects that soy has with all of the pesticides. The pesticides and the herbicides that they spray on it, you think it stays on it or you think it goes in it because they want it to get into it so that if any insect tries to eat into it, it'll be poisoned and killed. So when it's processed uh, with it, those uh, are within the, uh, the soy protein itself. So then they take soy protein and they heat it way up. And, of course, uh, scientists know that whey protein has got a lot of biological power. Um, you can, and, of course, that comes from milk. You take a skim milk, if you will, where a lot of the milk fat is removed, and uh, then they heat it to a super temperature, and, uh, and then they dry it out and uh, make it into a powder. Well, in the process of doing that, the biologically active components that whey has, that soy does not have, for burning fat and for building bone and lean and muscle are degenerated. They're, it's called denatured. They're broken down just like cooking vegetables can destroy the vitamin content in the, in the vegetables if you cook them too long. So as you can see on the screen right here, we have looked at it and uh, have developed a, a system, or it's not our system, but a company that we work with has developed this system to take the purified proteins and peptides and polypeptides and even things like uh, what they call micellar, these are pretty chemical names, but micellar calcium bonded casinates out. And this is the way that it works. Uh, and we say the soy is very heavily chemically, chemically contaminated. So is whey. Uh, but you can take a cow and it has a calf, and that calf can 
feed on the milk and grow up to be a, a cow, if you will. Uh, all the way as a calf, grow all the way up, and it builds all of the organs and the tissues and, and muscle and bone, everything. Why? Because, quite frankly, milk is nature's most nearly perfect food. It has over a thousand different types of compounds within it. And so there are a lot of really great things in milk. The problem is there's a lot of things that aren't so good either. So uh, in do looking at it, we've isolated what we believe, according to science, uh, is the worst of these ingredients, the bad ones, and have uh, used a system to separate and filtrate them out through a microfiltration process. And this uh, instrument that you're looking at in the, in the middle of it is a microfiltration system. And so what happens is uh, in milk you have a number of things. You have herbicides, you have pesticides. Why? Because it, uh, if they're feeding them uh, on pasture or feeding hay, alfalfa that's grown, they have to spray it to keep the weevil from eating it. And so they spray insecticides all over it. They spray ingredients that will kill the weeds and those types of things. And it's done a number of times a year. So what do you think happens to the hay? Of course, it's, it goes into it. And then they feed it, they feed cow silage in the winter, and that's made from corn. And, uh, and they give them uh, cereal grains uh, to eat when they're being milked so they can increase their output. And, of course, corn, as you know, is heavily sprayed because there's all kinds of uh, worms, caterpillars, uh, that feed on corn, and they get right in and eat the kernel to themselves. So they heavily spread a number of times a year, and uh, that goes right into the corn. They also sterilize the ground, uh, and that's the right word, sterilize it. They use a compound called atrazine, and nothing grows except corn, because it kills everything in the soil. Well, do you think the corn is taking that up into the plant? Of course it is as it's growing, and so you have that plant sterile in this air. So you have herbicides and pesticides. The other thing that it contains is lactose. And a lot of people are lactose intolerant. But what does lactose intolerance do? Well, it affects metabolic syndrome. It makes you want to, uh, to store fat. It, uh, it causes inflammation, and so do pesticides and herbicides. And even within the intestinal tract itself, so that you don't want to absorb nutrients and you're, you want to hold large amounts of water, it's like a sprained ankle. What happens when you sprain your ankle? It swells up. Sure, you have an inflammatory response to that, and it wants to protect it so it holds all the water in to cushion it. That same inflammation helps happens within the lining of your intestinal tract. You don't want to absorb as many nutrients, and it happens throughout the whole body. So these ingredients can contribute to it. Also, cows have a lot of antibiotics in it. They're always getting infection in the udder in the bag of the cow, and it's because of the fact that uh, cows are laying around in the dirt. Uh, they lay in the barn. There's manure there, all those kinds of things, and uh, the udder gets infected. It happens with all cows, and that happens a number of times a year. So as a consequence, if you have a cow with an infected uh, utter, what you need to do is to kill it with antibiotics, or it can become so bad, can even kill the cow itself. So uh, cattle are regularly given, milk cows are given antibiotics. Milk cows are not healthy either. So in order to get more milk, because farmers are paid on poundage, what they do is they hit them with hormones, hormones that make them produce more milk. And Normally, cows are milked about two times a day. Sometimes they're milked three. But uh, by putting a hormone into the cow, you increase milk production up to as much as 50% more. So what happens to those hormones? What happens to those antibiotics? They go right into the milk itself. And so then it's processed. And you've heard of pasteurization, of course, with milk. They heat it up to quite a high temperature. And in doing so, they denature it. They break it down. And so you do that, you have sterilized milk. And I do mean sterilized. What it is, is uh, the biologically active ingredients, those that really stimulated the calf or the pig or 
horse or whatever else it is on milk or even a baby uh, to really grow, they're just destroyed, they're denatured, they're degenerated, degraded into just a clump of meaningless proteins that perhaps the body can reconstitute to use to build muscle uh, because, uh, just from a nutritional value. But the stimulatory value of them is gone. It occurs in nature. It's there. Uh, these uh, proteins, these uh, uh, protein isolates, these fine refined uh, proteins, the peptides, the polypeptides that are so active are just uh, denatured, destroyed. So they're not there. So uh, in the meal replacement, they'll use whey, of course. But that whey is heated way up, uh, perhaps 300, 350 degrees. It disintegrates all of the actives. And then it's uh, dried and spray dried at temperature. So you have a whey protein. You could have isolates uh, in it where they take out more things. But it's, uh, it's ineffective protein other than just as general nutrition. But the companies come back and say, well, whey protein is very good for building muscle. Yes, it is. If you want to work out a lot, you really can. And uh, you, can, you, can, you need protein if you're exercising. But how many of us are going to want to lose weight and really increase our exercise? Some, but a lot of us not, because our lifestyles won't allow it or we're not of the disposition to do it. So here's what happens. We run our uh, product through that, and it's, it's layers of uh, porous layers. And as, as the milk goes through it, then it will start sloughing off the, the molecules, as you can see here, uh, and this, those molecules slough off, and they, they're carried off. And then it goes to the next level. This is like actually like the filtration is like a roll of toilet paper, if you can think of it that, that way, wound, winding after winding after winding. And each one of them was smaller and smaller pores to get through. And the milk, we don't heat ours. It's 105 degrees. So the good enzymes that are in milk are also there. And so we push it through under pressure. So the materials start separating off at different uh, stages. So you can separate off if you know what the stages are. And of course, scientists are, are skilled enough to know that. Lactose goes off, milk fat goes off, herbicides, pesticides, antibiotics, hormones. And then at certain levels, you get real specific proteins. And they're small. They're highly refined. They're very pure. You get the peptides and the polypeptides, which are even smaller. And so they come out, and then as you see the two products on the right and the left, you get these pure serum proteins uh, in the bottle on the right. Now it's just a ball illustration, so you can see it. On the other side, you have these calcium uh, cassinates that are there. And they're both loaded with proteins, but of different types. The calcium cassinates on the left also have a large complement of minerals within them. And then the waste goes out. So it throws off the waste, saves these pure uh, pro serum proteins and these highly refined calcium cassinates. So when they go in the body, they have two effects. The whey proteins support a really in significant increase in fat burning. And they support muscle building and tissue regeneration and building. And they provide that powerful support that the body has the ability to do if they're present, whereas a regular whey protein that is just cooked up and destroyed won't do that. So they do. And so for about two hours with the serum proteins, like on the right, you'll get a significant uh, support for increasing fat burning. And at the same time, you don't lower your basic metabolic rate. It's kept up high. And you're building, the, the goal of it is to build muscle, lean tissue, organs, all of those things. And so it's doing that. So your BMI is going up in lean. And then it has to call on fat stores to burn to, to support this activity that is going on in building lean body mass. And so that's powerful. Then the calcium cassinates come along, and they do a whole other series of things. What they do is they actually are very slow digesting, and they will bulk up. And so if you use our sizzling product, and, and you'll let it thicken up uh, for maybe five minutes, you'll notice it'll thicken up a lot. 
because it unfolds just like an umbrella does. It's narrow, and as you get it, it just starts to unfold. And as that happens, it, boy, you feel full. And it takes about six hours to move through the system. In the same time, it is loading with, with proteins and peptides and polypeptides and the whole complement of minerals that is uh, so important for building bone, teeth. All of those functions are there, and they're in the, the right forms that the body can use. Most calcium supplements are not very usable, and they got a lot of lead. This doesn't because it's so purified. And so you get a slow burn. You get a fast burn with the serum proteins, and then you get a slow burn with the casinates as they move through the system. And you feel full for a long time because you have that bulking. But in addition to that, they also are satisfying the receptors that tell you that you are full. And the receptors that are... Uh, that uh, when there is nothing in the stomach, they start sending signals out. It's called ghrelin, a hormone, that tells you you're hungry. Well, it attaches and hangs on to those. So it's not telling you you're hungry, and it's telling you you're full, and you have the fullness in your stomach. And so that burn that has been triggered by the serum proteins just keeps burning and burning and burning. And so as a consequence, you're going to, uh, this is our theory, and this uh, based on the science of these ingredients, you're going to build muscle mass and you're going to burn fat. So let's look at the next slide, and you'll see on it just how dramatic it can be versus these other products. Uh, let's say that uh, two people lost uh, 20 pounds of fat, uh, or it could be you on one program and another. If you have the standard formulation that's out that's either based on soy or soy and whey concentrates, uh, we theorize. Uh, based upon the research that we found, that you of uh, that 20 pounds you would lose, about 5 pounds of it would be lean, and about 15 pounds would be fat, therefore you've lost about 20 pounds. That's not very healthy. And because soy in particular is uh, effective on uh, creating uh, a loss of lean and in keeping nutrients up, we believe that for 20 pounds of weight, you'll have lost 5 pounds of lean, 15 pounds of fat. On the other hand, it, just the opposite reaction is going on because of these uh, purified serum proteins and the casinates in, in, this, uh, in this theory of cause and effect. So with the formulation that we use, we have uh, theoretically designed this, and we believe that it will accomplish it. We're going to be conducting some studies to show about where we're at on a number of people, but here's what we believe will happen with it. Because it is supporting the body to increase lean, you'll probably gain five pounds. And because that demands to burn fat, you're not using, losing fat just because of low calorie, as you would with the soy and the whey. You're actually having the demand to burn fat. You could lose 25 pounds of fat. So your net weight loss is 20 pounds, and the reason why, but 25 pounds is fat. And the difference is because the lean weighs more than fat. So you increase 5 pounds of lean building, you, you uh, lose 25 pounds, so the total is 20 pounds, but 25 pounds of that is fat, and you also have more lean. So look at the significant difference between this theory of Formula 1 and Formula 2. You'd have 10 pounds more of lean mass with uh, our formula in Formula 2 under this, and you'd have 10 pounds greater fat loss. I mean, that's pretty significant, don't you think? So which program do you think is healthy or unhealthy? And the, the other formula would load your body with all kinds of antibiotics, estrogen mimics, hormones, herbicides, pesticides, lactose, and where do you think your basic metabolic rate is going to go? Down, 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 down. Where's ours going to go? Up, 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 up. What a significant difference between the two. So that's the, the theory that we have used based upon the science that's been discovered uh, to make our products. Milk is actually really loaded with a lot of ingredients. What we do is we just slough off the ones that are no good, and we save the ones that are so precious and so important. So you can see this is a spectacular way. And I actually believe with this, because we don't contribute to metabolic syndrome, uh, you're going to have a significant impact on type 2 diabetes, which is normally 
uh, triggered because of metabolic syndrome and a lot of uh, fat accumulation and loss of lean, we think we're going to support the body to go just the other way uh, with it. Uh, there are some uh, dramatic differences between this product and the other. And uh, here's the stats. Soy and whey uh, protein-based meal replacements uh, put you in a starvation mode. Uh, you have the metabolic syndrome, the dark side of soy. It does so many things, as you can see, that are listed there that we talked about. The soy lowers basic metabolic, uh, or, uh, basic, uh, the body mass index, the basic metabolic rate, blocks digestive enzymes, inhibits the absorption of nutrients and minerals, and all of the other things, isoflavones, leukemia, breast cancer, and they contribute to learning disorders, ADD, dyslexia, skin conditions, respiratory issues, decreased pulse. Your hair is going to grow slower, we think, uh, with it. Whey protein uh, meal replacements also have their dark side, too. All of the things that we've been talking about, toxins, water, in the crops, pastures, insecticides, and then they're processed at high temperatures, so the very beneficial things are just destroyed. They lose their biological activity. You have some nutritional value. Sure, the pus is all killed and all that, still there. I think that's of nutritional value. So we don't believe in that uh, that way, but it's cheap. That's why people use and soy is super cheap. That's why they use soy and the whey, where ours are very expensive. But because we manufacture, uh, we can take these expensive ones to make a better product. Uh, we have a uh, rapid weight loss meal replacement program with it with all of these ingredients, and these are the very things that we've been talking about and what it does. So it's your choice. You can lose weight or not lose weight, depending on the product that you choose. You can have healthy weight loss or you can have unhealthy weight loss, depending on the product that you choose. And these other companies will never tell you about these kinds of things. And the negative properties are in their products, so the potential. And these positive ones, they might try and allude to it, but in reality, the way they process it, they're not there. Sizzling, we believe you can become a fat-burning, fat-shredding, fat-binding machine. It does all of those, or sports all of those things. You can feel full for four to six hours, curb your hunger, energize your entire body uh, with this formula. And we think two to five pounds of weight loss a week is a real possibility at first. But when you start getting down, you're going to lose, but it's not going to be at the ratio at first. We have a product to go with it called Accelerator Capsules. You can take those, and it speeds up, supports speeding up your fat burning, your metabolism, by about equal to an hour's worth of exercise. And we have another product uh, with it, and it's called Slender Pops. Sizzling is a meal replacement. Slender Pops is the snack replacement. It is very different than anything else. It's a, it's a lollipop, but... Uh, it has no sugars in it, no fructose. And so it satisfies your hunger and triggers a diuretic release of fat cells and binds fat in the stomach. It really works. So it's a snack replacement. And uh, then we're bringing out a product come out that is called Breakthrough. It's a high-energy drink, but you don't get buzzed out. We're using technology from all around the world. Literally, the technology that makes a grasshopper hop so far is a really an inter... is a an amino acid that we have been able to find and isolate, and one that greatly increases stamina. And then we have an ingredient from down in, in uh, uh, the Amazon that increases oxygenation rate and cell turnover rate. And so you'll come up, but unlike some of these wild caffeine kickers that are like 500 milligrams of calcium, take you up and then drop you, this just brings you up, and it just keeps recycling and recycling, and you feel good all day long. And uh, we have recurve. So if you've got some love handles, turkey gobblers, little cellulite here, there, or everywhere, this is the product to greatly improve it. I developed the original thigh cream. That's some going to work, but this thing is far more advanced than what that is. That was 15, 20 years ago, and uh, this is the most advanced formula. I became famous for the other one. I'm not going to become famous for this one. Uh, but it's certainly twice, three times the formula the other one was. Uh, we're going to have a 90-day ultimate body sculpting challenge. This is going to start next month. And we'll have prizes and awards and recognition. We're going to have trips, cash prizes, all kinds of glamour gifts, everything. And we're going to pick a number of 
winners every three months. So you get in the challenge, you submit your photos, we'll grade them, we'll have the distributors vote on them, we're going to have big social support teams, and this is going to be fun, and you're going to watch the pounds just drop off. So now we're giving you a way to take back your life with health, with weight loss, and we're going to have a program if you get three people, three customers, uh, to buy the weight loss products, uh, you'll get yours for free.